Welcome back. So, in the previous lecture, uh, we discussed about the different type of glaciers. Either it is continental glacier or alpine type glacier, and we very briefly discussed about the the fern line, or we can say the zone of ablation and zone of accumulation. So, uh, coming back to this one again. So, what we have is the glacier mass balance and this will keep changing over the period. So, you have the, the zone of accumulation where you gain the, the snow or the ice accumulation will be there and below this line there will be an ablation and this is where you keep losing the, the snow during hotter phases. So, glacial mass balance, this is schematic changes in the geometry of a glacier during an equilibrium budget years. So, this is what has been shown here is glacier surface at the start is this and over the time it gains here and this is a zone of tape. So, if you increase the mass this side, you reduce the mass this side. So, this is what has been shown here and if you see this photograph which shows the, the accumulation zone here and this part or this line is the line of the, the fern line. So, below this you will have the, the, the loss whatever the loss you will take will take place in terms of the losing uh, the, the ice here. So, or the glaciers. So, melting of uh, glaciers will take place in this region, whereas mostly this area will remain stable. So, this marks the, this is the close up of that, this marks the line of the fern line and this is an ablation zone and this is an accumulation zone. Now, alpine glaciers mainly flow from hill to low elevation in mountain settings include a variety of type. For example, these are the most commonly seen features or the landscape SERPs and this landforms are the glaciers which shows bowl shaped mountain top which marks the origin of glacier or are small ice masses occupying arm chair shaped bedrock. Then we have valley glacier flows like rivers down the valley. Then we have Piedmont glaciers spread at the end of the valley or forms where valley glacier leaves mountain. So, very much similar to the what we were talking in fluvial landscape like alluvial fans. So, when they are confined within the valley and then become unconfined. So, spread out of the glaciers when they leave the, the valley or mountains and spread out on the flat land as a large lobe. So, these are termed as Piedmont glaciers. So, Glacial erosional landforms from glaciated valleys, mostly you will come across cirques, tons, erit, horn, and then along with that, you will also come across U shaped valleys, hanging valleys, roche mountainy, or V shaped valleys and fajots. So, one by one we will try to see the features which are been that is the erosional features of mainly related to the glaciated valleys 
one by one how it looks like actually. And please remember that this landforms which have been listed here, the U-shaped valley, cirques, arid horn, hanging valley, truncated spurs or truncated valleys and V-shaped valleys, these are all features you will see in or you will be able to identify in alpine glacial only. So, pre-glacial terrain will be with smooth slopes and fluvial activity will dominate. So, this is pre-glacial before the glacial landscape or the glacier occupied this area. So, smooth topography or the smooth slopes and most of the area is covered by the surface, the not, not an erosional surface is here and the deposition and the drainages and very much similar to what we were looking in the flat plain area. So, river flat plains will exist and all that. So, the overall topography will be with smooth slopes. Now, coming to the glacial time, the terrain will be covered by snow, glacial landscapes start developing. So, the pre-glacial smooth terrain, but now we are getting slightly sharper ridges and the movement of the the ice mass or the snow will result into formation of different landforms. So, for example, cirques then when there is right now what we see is the complete fill of the snow. So, the whole area which has been shown here in this part is completely covered including the, the valleys here or the, the space between the two mountains, low lying areas are all covered by snow. Even the flood plain region which has been seen here is covered by uh, the snow. So, you have thick pile of snow and then as we learn about the the supraglacial, subglacial and n-glacial features or the, the, the movement of the, it will take place of, of movement of, of mainly the snow will take place in this region and then we will see the, the depositional landforms which have been created termed as moraine. So, this is at the time of glacial and then post glacial. So, now there is a retreat of glacial and the system which were freezed will start getting extended. So, again you have drainage and then at the same time you have the moraine comprised of the sediments, loose sediments are moved along the glacial movement as well as deposited. So, you have terminal movement moraines, terminal moraines and terminal moraines are seen here also as well as the medial or the lateral moraines. Then you have arid, cirques, horns, hanging valleys because the glacial mass which was been covered over here has eroded and resulted into the formation of such sharp cliffs, truncated spurs and all that. So, we will see few of these examples. So, post glacial what you will find is both erosional and depositional landforms. So, transition phase of glacier you will again have the the formation of the drainages where braided stream will come into existence and also you will see some fluvial activities 
in the region. Also at the same time in the interglacial phase. So, previous one was your transition phase and this is at the time of the interglacial stage what you will see the formation of eskers, kames, kettle, kame terraces slightly elevated surfaces as compared to this region are termed as Kame terraces or Kame islands here. What you see here is the almost like plateau like features Kames and this is after the glaciation. So, during interglaciation the well developed drainages and the eskers are formed and because of the erosions the left out areas are flat plateau type regions are Kames, then Kame delta or maybe you can say Kame terraces and the kettle holes. So, this is the photograph showing several features here. One is cirque, glaciers fill mountain top, bowls or small ice masses occupying armchair shape bedrock in mountains also termed as kori an amphitheater like valley created by glacial erosion so you have this is again an armchair shape so they are separated by at this area is we can say is bordered by two arids on the either side or you can say it is an mountain top filled with snow and it is bowl shape and they are also termed as kori in some countries. So, this is the part of your serps. Similarly over here if you see the close up, so this is the portion of cirque and these are two arid. So, you have cirque, you have cirque again another one here and this ridge is your arid. So, you have smaller cirques here, larger one here separated by two arids here. So, it is an arm chair similar to arm chair. So, this is another photograph of cirque and here also again you can easily mark the fern line ablation zone and accumulation zone. Piedmont glaciers spread out at the end of the valley or form where valley glacier leaves mountains and spread on a flat or large lobes similar to what we were learning in fluvial landscape. Then close glacial landforms further if we see the examples of a horn and all that let us see in the next slide. So, this is the and the depositional part here is your lateral moraines. So, landform produced at the ice margin include different type of end moraines all of which formed around the glacial snout. A lateral moraine lies at the site of glacier. So, usually the whole area covered by snow when snow moves or the glacial moves it will erode and carry the material or the sediments. Now, this sediments are deposited during the interglacial period. It are transported during the glacial, glacial movements and deposited finally during interglacial. So, the deposits which are been left out on the either side of the, the glacier are termed as lateral moraines. So, if you see these are all lateral moraines. So, again the side. So, this is an example of side moraine, but this is side moraine for this one but this forms a medial moraine 
because two valleys are meeting here. So, merging valley glacier within medial moraine. Again an example of the lateral moraine, another example of lateral moraine as well as you can see here the aerate, small one aerate here and then and large area which is we can say the bowl shape or amphitheater like feature cirque. So, we have aerate here. So, what you define aerate is knife edge ridge. So, very sharp ridge formed by two cirques that have eroded towards one another. Similarly, over here this is a cirque here, this is an arm shaped feature cirque then fern line zone of ablation zone of accumulation. Now, plucking is another common phenomena or the process which is experienced in the glacial terrain and this is nothing but ice breaks off and remove bedrock fragments. So, what you have is the moment of the snow will erode and carry the the sediments within it and in some location because of the fractured rocks which are available the the snow or the ice will get filled up in the cracks will get refreezed again and during the movement it will start plucking up the the rock fragments so, plucking ice breaks off and remove bedrock fragments. So, this is the breaking process as well as removing the rocky fragments. Ice melts by pressure against the up ice side of an obstacle. So, ice melts by pressure against the up ice. This is the up ice side of an absolute entering cracks. So, ice will enter the crack and refreezing will help in breaking the bedrock. So, glacial movement plucks away the bedrock chunks. So, it will erode by such in form of such chunks. Now, coming to the another feature again an erosional one which is formed by three or more coily cirques. So, we have one cirque, another cirque here and third at the back side on this one. So, if you combine three cirques then you have a feature or a mountain peak known as horn and this photograph is from Switzerland which shows which is from the glaciated region which shows the formation of horn. Now, coming to the pro glacial features we have kettle. So, kettle hole or pond bowl shaped depression. So, bowl shaped depression in glacial sediments left when it detached or buried block of ice melts often contain a pond at the base of the mountain. So, this is the, the example of kettle formed at the base of the hill. If pond is formed close to cirque then it is termed as Tons. So, this is what you see here, it, this is the cirque and this one is the kettle or, but since it is close to the cirque it is termed as 
tartons. So, glacial abrasion basically what we see is when the coarser particles or the fragments which are moved at the basal part or along the basal part of the glacial, then such striations are developed because of the, the polishing or scratching of the surfaces. So, the material which has been carried the fragments sliding over the bedrock and these are all what we call subglacial sediments. So, they will scratch groove and polish the bedrock to produce striation or fine grooves as well as grinding the bedrock to fine grain material which can be measured like up to less than 100 micrometer in diameter. So, this process will happen whenever there is a movement. So, this is what we term as an glacial abrasion and these are the features or the striations which will be left out and such striations will give us a clue that there was once in a past the there was a glacial which moved on the on this on this terrain. Now, coming to the another important features there is a typical U shaped valleys which are been shown here. So, glacials snow will occupy or must have occupied in the past this whole area from this to this, but now after the retreat of glacier or ablation or maybe you can say the melting of the glacier, the movement of snow has resulted into the formation of U shaped valleys. U shaped valleys. So, we can say that erosion due to glacial movements will create a distinct trough. So, distinct trough will be created by the glacial movement unlike V shaped fluvial valley. So, V shaped fluvial valley are narrow, but this are wider and U, U in shape. So, difference is very clear between the U shaped and the V shaped valleys. V shaped valleys are narrow gorges, but U shaped valleys are basically broad and rounded one. Again hanging valley as we were talking about that if glacial mass which used to cover this area retreat, then it will allow the river to flow from the in this point and below higher and elevated hanging valleys are formed. So, the intersection of the tributary glacier with a trunk glacier. So, this is a tributary glacier and the trunk glacier must be sitting somewhere here down. Trunk glaciers incise deeper into the bedrock. So, trunks glaciers have incised deeper into the bedrock causing to have different elevation formed into formation of waterfall. So, this is what is been seen here. You have hanging valley and then waterfall which has been developed in the hanging valley side. So, this is what we see in case of the subglacial features mainly the drum line and they will occur in group. So, it is an elongated hill with an oval or egg shaped. So, this will be the source side and this will be the lever side. So, or, or you can say it is shigar shaped outline it will be so, the you will see such multiple range ridges which exist. So, drum line along aligned hill or model lodgements, this is what has been shown here. So, cross section if you see 
you will have the stow side and lever side and this will be the, this is the flow direction. So, usually the egg shaped this will be seen as a egg shaped or cigar shaped. So, the pointed side will be the ice flow direction. So, typical shape of trim line. So, this is the flow direction and you will see multiple such ridges. So, this is again a depositional feature. Now, this shows the signature of retreat of glaciers. So, this portion who are here at the base, this is from Nepal Himalaya, which shows the ice retreat or glacial retreat over last 400 years, leaving bare stony ground inside the terminal moraine. Coming to another feature, eskers. Now, these are glacial fluvial landforms. So, eskers are long sinus winding ridges. So, these are the typical deposits which are termed as our long sinus ridges termed as eskers and they will also occur in series of mounds composed mainly of stratified or semi stratified sand and gravel. Deposition in subglacial channels, the sediments are transported within the melt water channels or below ice. Channel sediments are released when the ice melts. Can finally, when the landscape is completely devoid of glacial cover, such sinus ridges can be easily seen spread over the terrain. These are termed as eskers. So, this is an U shaped glacial trough area flooded by sea or ocean water and termed as fragots and fragot floors usually lies below sea level and is a glaciated valley drowned by ocean water. Now, coming to again the the erratics. Kangada valley is in India. So, this flat terrain what you see is the surface or the area which used to be covered by glacial during past geological period. This is how it looks like, but now right now what we see the glaciers are sitting in the higher mountains. Uh, if you move to on this terrain, you, what you find, so this is in the higher portion which I was showing at the back here. So, you have this portion. So, we have we still see the glacier, but if you move down into the valley, then you have a flat surface. The typical glacial terrain and then those surfaces are been incised by the present or recent fluvial system, huge boulders, the surfaces are composed of huge boulders, which are mainly the part of the uh, glacier sediments, which were moved or the moraines. The glacial deposits look something like this. What you have this is shown in the succession and then the huge boulders, which were been transported at the time of the glacial movement. Even in the present day channels, you see in huge boulders, when the surfaces were been eroded and this is the one which I was talking about the erratic, a large isolated angular block of rock carried by glacier and deposited far from its source. So, such an huge 
holder was definitely were not carried by the streams but of course by the glacial so you can un look at the size of the the erratic a huge angular to sub angular boulder so with this i end this part and we will continue with new topic in the next lecture thank you so much